What is laminitis? Learn what is laminitis disease and how it affects the animal when it strikes. Laminitis mainly affects horses, ponies and donkeys, but it can also affect the bovine dairy cows. Laminitis is a recurring and painful condition. It's a disorder that impacts the sensitive tissues known as laminae, which bond the hoof wall to the pedal bone. Imagine the laminae as Velcro, keeping the hoof wall and pedal bone securely attached, like our nails to the nail bed on our fingertips being kept securely attached. However, with laminitis, this Velcro-like bond weakens, causing the pedal bone to potentially sink or rotate within the hoof. This can shift can inflict extreme pain, and in severe cases result in the pedal bone penetrating through the hoof sole. Now that we have a basic understanding of what laminitis is, we'll dive into the possible causes behind this condition in laminitis disease. Now that we know what laminitis is, let's look into the causes. The possible causes of laminitis. Understanding the causes of laminitis can help in its prevention. So, let's dive right in. Laminitis is a complex condition with multiple causes. It's a painful affliction that affects the sensitive lamini in the hooves of horses and ponies alike, leading to extreme discomfort and, in severe cases, permanent damage. One of the primary causes of laminitis is hormonal disorders. Up to 90% of laminitis cases are linked to conditions such as equine Cushing's disease and equine metabolic syndrome. These disorders can disrupt the normal functioning of a horse's body and increase the risk of developing laminitis. Excessive weight gain is another major cause. When a horse carries too much weight, it puts additional pressure on the hooves, leading to the stretching and weakening of the lamini. This, in turn, can cause the movement and rotation of the pedal bone within the hoof, triggering the onset of laminitis. Digestive system overload and colic are also contributing factors. An overburdened digestive system can lead to the release of toxins into the bloodstream, which can then affect the laminae, causing inflammation and pain. Similarly, colic can disrupt the normal functioning of the horse's body, increasing the risk of laminitis. Abnormal weight-bearing and mechanical issues also play a role in the development of this condition. If a horse is forced to bear weight abnormally due to injury or poor hoof care, it can lead to undue stress on the lamini, triggering laminitis. Lastly, we cannot overlook the role of inflammation, endocrine disorders, or mechanical overload in causing laminitis. These factors can all contribute to the development and progression of this painful condition. Understanding these causes is crucial as it allows for the implementation of preventative measures and early intervention tactics, potentially saving your horse from a great deal of discomfort and distress. Now that we have a clear understanding of what causes laminitis, let's look at the symptoms. Diagnosing laminitis. Recognizing the symptoms of laminitis early can lead to a better prognosis. So let's look into what these symptoms might look like. The most common symptom, and often the first one you'll notice, is lameness. This can manifest as a reluctance to move, an unusual gait, or even an outright refusal to walk. The horse might seem more comfortable when moving on softer ground, or appear to be walking on eggshells. Another common symptom is heat in the hooves. This heat is a result of inflammation within the hoof, and it can be felt by placing your hand on the hoof wall and sole. The hoof may also have a stronger than normal digital pulse. The symptoms of laminitis can also include changes in the horse's stance. The horse may lean back on its hindquarters to relieve the pressure on its front feet, adopting what is known as the laminitic stance. In more severe cases, there can be a rotation or sinking of the pedal bone within the hoof. This is a result of the tissues bonding the hoof wall to the pedal bone failing. It's a painful condition that can lead to serious complications, including the penetration of the sole by the pedal bone. It's important to remember that the symptoms can vary from horse to horse. Some horses may show only mild signs, while others may be in extreme pain. Chronic cases may also show signs of recurrent lameness or changes in the shape of the hoof over time. Early detection is absolutely crucial. The sooner laminitis is diagnosed, the better the chance of successful management and recovery. If you notice any of these symptoms, it's vital to call a vet immediately. Laminitis is a serious and painful condition and it should always be treated as an emergency. With these symptoms in mind, we can now focus on the management of laminitis. Management and the treatment of laminitis. Management and treatment of laminitis are critical for the welfare of the horse. The first step in managing laminitis is prompt. Effective pain control would be needed. 
This often involves the use of painkillers, which should always be administered under the guidance of a vet. The pain caused by laminitis can be severe, so it's important to alleviate it as quickly as possible to prevent unnecessary suffering. Supporting the horse's foot is another key component of treatment. This can be achieved through the use of special shoes or pads that redistribute the horse's weight away from the painful areas. The goal is to stabilize the pedal bone within the hoof, preventing further damage and helping to relieve pain. The horse should also be kept on box rest. This means confining the horse to a stable or small paddock to limit movement and allow the hoof to heal. The duration of box rest can vary, but it often lasts several weeks or even months. Dietary changes is another crucial part of managing laminitis. High levels of sugar and starch in the diet can trigger laminitis, so these should be avoided. Instead, the horse should be fed a balanced diet that's low in non-structural carbohydrates. It's important to work closely with a vet or equine nutritionist to ensure the horse's dietary needs are being met. In some cases, the hooves may need to be trimmed to correct any deformities caused by laminitis. This should be done by a professional farrier who has experience dealing with laminitic horses. Regular hoof care is also essential to prevent further episodes of laminitis. Recovery from laminitis can take weeks to months, and each horse's journey will be different. Some horses may recover relatively quickly, while others may need ongoing treatment and management. Unfortunately, horses that have had laminitis are at an increased risk of future episodes. This is why it's so important to work closely with a vet and follow their advice to the letter. In severe cases where the pain can't be managed or the quality of life is severely compromised, euthanasia may be recommended. This is always a last resort, but sometimes it's the kindest option for the horse. Remember, managing laminitis is a team effort. It involves the horse owner, the vet, the farrier, and often a nutritionist. Everyone needs to work together to give the horse the best chance of recovery. With the correct management and treatment, horses can recover from laminitis. Preventing the recurrence of laminitis. Prevention is always better than cure, especially when it comes to laminitis as it is painful and a recurring condition. But with careful management and attention to key preventative measures, we can help reduce the risk of this distressing disease of laminitis. One of the most important steps in preventing laminitis is promptly treating any underlying diseases. This could be a hormonal disorder like equine Cushing's disease or equine metabolic syndrome, both of which can contribute to the onset of laminitis. Timely veterinary intervention is crucial in these cases. There is an increased risk of recurring onset of laminitis in frosty weather as the grass releases sugars to act as antifreeze. Clever plants. Keep a close eye on laminitic prone horses and ponies during such weather conditions, especially in the spring with the new lush grass growing as the new growth is rich in sugars. So all laminitic prone equines will need to have restricted grazing for several weeks until the grass matures. Their diet also plays a significant role in the prevention of laminitis. Reducing the horse's consumption of non-structural carbohydrates, particularly sugars and starch, can help manage insulin levels in the blood and prevent hyperinsulinemia, a common trigger for laminitis. This means being mindful of grazing time and the type of forage your horse consumes. It's not about cutting calories, but about providing a balanced diet that meets the horse's nutritional needs without overloading their system. In addition to diet, maintaining a healthy weight is essential. Obesity can increase the risk of laminitis, so regular exercise should be a part of every horse and pony's routine. It's not just about running laps around the paddock, but ensuring a mix of activities that helps keep their weight in check and their hooves healthy. Speaking of hooves, proper hoof care is fundamental in preventing laminitis. Essentially, without good feet you have nothing. The hoof tells you so much about the state of your horse's health and without a healthy horse it's hard to have healthy hooves. This can involve everything from regular trimming to the use of foot supports for high-risk horses. Your farrier can be a valuable partner in this, helping to ensure that your horse's hooves are in the best possible condition. Remember, prevention isn't a one-time thing, it requires consistent effort and vigilance, but the reward is well worth it, a healthier, happier horse. By understanding and implementing these preventive measures, we can help our horses lead healthier and happier lives. Thank you for watching.